i've been listening to interesting debates and topics on i should uh, switch over my speciality to diabetes i think <laughs> very interesting topic but anyway diabetics no diabetology is a very evolving speciality uh, today morning i was just l- uh, learning a lot of topics on the newer drugs today i had a happy that i stayed here today for this newer options in the management of diabetes cutaneous signs of diabetes mellitus are extremely valuable to the clinicians appear after the primary disease have developed or may signal or appear with onset and pre- precede diabetes by many years this we have all seen in the earlier times skin disorders are common complications of in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus commonly we face cutaneous infections dry skin pruritus that can lead to major complications and highly associated with hyperglycemia and advanced glycation end products better understanding of skin disorders in diabetics may arise may raise awareness and prevention management prevalence of skin diseases in both type 1 and type 2 varied from 51 to 97% in different regions most frequent disorder reported are infection which every day in day to day practice we see most of the patients do come with a kind of a infections and most commonly the fungal infections take the top priority where the most prevalent than bacterial or viral infections most sites affected are interdigital spaces genitalia and skin folds when we were students we were told to examine the interdigital toe between the f- last small little toe and the fourth toe to look for the tinea pedis you know it's very common from there the cellulite starts so i think uh, still holds good that uh, these are all markers of diabetes we how do you classify classify these manifestations in diabetics mainly into four categories skin lesions with strong or weak association with diabetes mellitus which include necrobiosis lipidica diabetic dermopathy diabetic bullae yellow skin which we never seen at all eruptive xanthomas do never occur because of the advent of the anti lipid drugs perforating disorders we do see these patients with renal disorders in diabetics acanthosis nigricans this is an evolving topic that acanthosis nigricans is an endocrinopathy wherein we see in metabolic syndrome it's a good marker for insulin resistance associated with diabetes and pcods and of course oral lichen planus we have syndromes there and infections very commonly seen in bacterial and fungal infections cutaneous manifestation of diabetic complications like microangiopathy and micro macroangiopathy and neuropathy very very commonly seen in extremities skin reactions to diabetic treatments sulfonylureas insulin those days we used to see insulin induced lipotrophy we hardly see nowadays and probably the new anti diabetic i have a small set of single slide which i've been trying to put into but it's very difficult to understand maybe the time will tell that newer anti diabetics will tell what are the side effects on the skin and recognize them so that it, i do not know whether it has a correlation between the other factors vascular metabolic <coughs> necrobiotic bullous infections neuropathic treatment related and miscellaneous this how we look into the classification some studies which i am not quoting but non infections are very common pruritus those days when my professor tambay used to say any generalized unexplained pruritus in the middle age past 50 look for diabetes psoriasis dermopathy xerosis is a very early sign in diabetics so that we need to be very careful infections i told you dermatophytosis hit the list 42.6% and in that common is onychomycosis very refractive very difficult to treat these people might require for a period of 6 months to 1 year next common is tinea pedis very most of them will have tinea pedis no we need to look into that candidiasis of the skin and nail very commonly still holds good a man who's got a tight foreskin paraphimosis with the fissuring of the foreskin is a feature of a candidial balanopastitis you check the blood sugar it is high and then we send it to the diabetologist a marker of early diabetes staph aureus infection rules the world staph is a commonly seen in every diabetics it can lead from simple pyoderma to furuncle to abscess to cellulitis and erysipelas so i think we need to be very careful treating recognize them early and early stage skin disease diabetes includes xerosis callus and fissures fissures are often neglected foot care is not even done away nobody washes their feet properly nobody 
it is very important this is like hansen's food hansen's disease food we have to pay little attention to these people with diabetes that food care is a important uh, topic which results in neuropathy ulcers and amputation diabetes induced neuropathy sensory motor autonomic pathways leading to different dermatological conditions the sensory include decreased temperature sensation affecting sensibility of lesions with orthotic devices and many other events they go walk barefooted and get into a lot of problems xerosis callus foot deformity or early stages complication targets avoid development of diabetic foot acanthosis nigricans i'm just, just telling you a marker of metabolic disease now it's been established many patients with an have either clinical or subclinical insulin resistance an is characterized by hyperpigmentation and papillary hypertrophy it is called as type 3 pseudo acanthosis nigricans seen in obesity endocrinopathies insulin resistance state go all co- go exist skin sites are commonly seen on the neck axillary groin nasal bridges and periorally any fellow who is obese and dark particularly you look at the neck and look at the axilla if it is rugous folds with thickening i think it's uh, probably you are looking at to insulin resistance early lead indicator of just telling you genital inf- irritation burning while urinating sweating disorders and frequent infections are early signs may warrant for a blood sugar estimation boils abscess hair follicle infections erythrasma intertrigo most of the diabetes do have i'm going to quickly go through a picture so to memory you get into that so that you have been college days we've been seeing all these diseases very easy to uh, this is a furuncal caused by staph aureus never seen its ages since i a carbuncle probably advent of insulin we see lymphangitis cellulite is very very common we go into the icu there we see this patient stiff for 10 to 14 days we go to give high dose of antibiotics with intra in insulin management okay then from bacteria we move on to fungal infections tinea versicolor dermatophytosis candidiasis and systemic fungal infections pityriasis versicolor very easy but it's not a marker any patient who sweat more can due to immunosuppressions and uh, this is common nowadays we see this all over india where extensive dermatophytosis occur do occur in every individual whether it's a doctor or a college student or a diabetic everyone gets it. we do not know the reason we have a big program in india that we are facing recurrent resistant refractory dermatophytosis never even respond to itraconazole or terbinafine even for higher doses with more than 2 months therapy i don't know the environmental factor genetic makeup or the drug has become resistant so this is the common dermatophytes called ringworm this is the onychomycosis very common in diabetics i'll quickly go through ah this is the reason for that people use steroid combina antifungal combination this should never be never be given this is what generally general practitioners other specialty including few of a dermatologist do give because to suppress the inflammation suppress all the signs of symptoms never to use this is a very classical one all diabetics please a mark in your case sheet that you spread the toe ask for this specifically this intergenet dermatophytos called trichophyta and rubrum remains lifetime in these guys and intertrigo candidiasis the opportunistic infections commonly seen in vulval and genital candidiasis in diabetics oral candida very rarely seen again oral candidiasis intertrigo very common because of sweat maceration and common soil overgrowth how do you treat we treat uh, very 10% potassium hydroxide you can check the yeast cells and budding hyphae topical myconazole clotrimazole ketoconazole fluconazole so many agents have come glisofalvin now revisiting because they don't respond the itraconazole and uh, terbinafine do not respond we go back to higher dose of ter- uh, it, uh, glisofalvin for a period of 6 uh, weeks to 2 months terbinafine fluconazole and nitroconazole fluconazole is a good choice against candida <coughs> complications of diabetes trophic ulcers and gangrene we have neuropathic ulcers typical classical we take the help of a, a diabetic foot consultants and then maybe a plastic surgeon and orthopedic surgeon we try to help them to save the limb without going for amputation and trophic ulcers are pressure sores are very commonly seen in a person who has not been education plays a major role in this i think one year we were self who given us a foot care for diabetics gangrene i'm not much seen but it do occur i had a patient admitted last week in with gangrene 
self amputation is the only choice they don't want to do operate on the patient because patient was comorbidity was there and uh, yeah these are the long standing dermopathy bulle pseudoacanthosis scleridema diabetic coron very rarely we see this is a very common condition very easy to recognize they have a thick neck thick back and it's not scleroderma you can feel that and then in sclero in scleroderma we try to pinch it it won't but here it's so sudden and hide bound and eruptive xanthomas eruptive uh, gang granuloma annulare have uh, been not given up nowadays all these associations are not specific do occur age related conditions curlis disease commonly seen diabetics with uh, uh, renal disease lipodystrophy is hardly we see yellow nails no and uh, this is what acanthosis nigricans says so please look for all diabetics about this and try to manage the insulin insulin resistance and all obese fellow people with acanthosis nigricans if you see skin tags i think they are a family history of skin tags the children must be screened for this obesity must be controlled dietary advice and obesity must be controlled the early stages shin spots diabetic rubiosis hardly seen in uh, darker individuals bulle is very commonly seen in patients who are admitted in the ward we see there's no reason for the any kind of a a bullet occurring on the feet of the patient in patient there and it's mostly benign it's nothing to be worried uh, this is the diabetics i made to skin the prayer sign and the stiff neck and yellowish discoloration that's the sclero scleroderma rectorum of bushki of uh, diabetes and you have vitiligo do occur in diabetics because of autoimmune disease very commonly seen in elderly diabetics who develop vitiligo maybe association is there and yellow nails and then insulin dipostrophy Curlis disease, eruptive xanthomas, granuloma annulare, necrobiosis lipidica. Very rarely we do see. Sometimes we take a biopsy and then try to treat them well nicely. And diabetic dermopathy is very commonly called shin spots. Yes, yes. I just want to go to small slide on. I want to quickly finish because nothing much here. But uh, alertness is very important. That GLP agonist like. Uh, glucagon like peptide 1 receptor causes inject injection site reactions which is itchy mild and erythematous and transient agl2 inhibitors causes uh, oral agents candidiasis in 10% of these patients women and uncircumscribed men the candidiasis is very common here angioedema dpp4 inhibitor ac inhibitor if they do go to the today morning had a patient who had a capg done diabetic hypertension on uh, on uh, anti diabetics and uh, Uh, losartan so i think ac inhibitors causes severe acute angioedema almost uh, uh, like your anaphylaxis they come and please identify these patients if they this patient of course had once uh, insulin but there's a big topic on this uh, there was a heated topic in the last speaker session but this uh, 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 very clear indication that the phase they went into phase 3 trial and found out that this drug does not cause angioedema so they are given a, well, uh, a clear version that it can be maybe associated with the ac inhibitors make sure that take a proper history and peripheral edema is very commonly in seen 1 to 2 percent of treated patients photosensitivity urticaria eosinophilic drug rashes are common with uh, the uh, dpp4 inhibitors conclusion high prevalence of skin disease in diabetes patients showing that careful dermatological examination and outpatient follow up is perf- needed in the long run thank you sir i made it a little faster sir thank you so much sir have a colorful day thanks